there so far and take some notes over 11.4. So just as a refresher, in 11.1, the idea was the rectangular coordinate system. And we didn't do 11.1, but basically the idea is that we can create an ordered pair X and Y, and we can plot that on a coordinate system. Okay, we have our X and Y uh, coordinates, and we can plot it. And the idea through this chapter is going to be, can I plot a couple of points and connect the dots to graph a line? That's the big picture of this chapter. Can we graph a line? So it starts out with plotting a point. Then in 11.2, which we did in class, we went ahead and graphed linear equations. We graphed some stuff. We graphed our standard form of a linear equation, ax plus by equals c. We graphed things like 5x plus 3y equals 7. We graphed them. How do we graph them? An xy table. And when we did an xy table, it took like 5 to 10 minutes. It took up the entire space here. And it really was a sad way to go about it, even though the XY table will always work, okay? It always works. It's a good thing to have in our back pocket. We can always rely on it. But if we don't have to do an XY table, maybe we shouldn't. And the first step to getting towards not using an XY table was the X and Y intercepts. In 11.2, we briefly talked about maybe the X and Y intercepts are one easier way to graph, meaning if I can find the X intercept and I can find the Y intercept, I can connect those two dots, you know, straighter line than what I drew there, then I can graph quickly. We like X and Y intercepts because to find the X intercept, Y equals zero. I set Y to zero, three times zero goes away and I solve for X pretty simply. If I want to find the y-intercept, I set x equal to 0. Well, 5 times 0 is 0, and I get 3y equals 7. It's supposed to be an easier way. I wouldn't say it takes our frowny face to a smiley face. I think it takes our frowny face to a kind of more ambivalent, okay? But what we're going to see in 11.3 and then more today in 11.4 with slope-intercept form is that we will get to that smiley face. We should be able to graph quickly and efficiently. It shouldn't be this nightmare of an XY table. All right. So in 11.3 on those videos, they were talking mainly about slope. The, the whole thing was about slope. And the slope M was defined as the rise over the run, very generically. Meaning we look at things going up and down, and then we look at them going left to right. Okay, now our slope going up very steeply has a slope that's very, that's positive left to right. We look at a slope positive left to right. Um, if it's going up, it's left to right, it's positive. And this might have a slope of 10. If the slope gets less steep like this, this might be a slope of one half. If it's flat, if it's horizontal, I shouldn't say m equals. So this is positive a half. This might have a slope of zero if it's flat. And if it goes downward left to right, this is going to have a negative slope, maybe negative three, negative five, something like that. So we can familiarize ourselves with slope. How steep is the line? All right, because it's very important. Today we're gonna to talk about, if I asked you to think of a line on a coordinate system and then tell me where it is so I can draw it, but you can't show it to me, you have to use your words, you would come up with, oh, the slope is like this. It's very steep, and it's positive. And then the next thing you'd say, well, where do I put it? And that's exactly what we're going to do in 11.4 today with slope-intercept form. How steep is it, and where do I put it? And you can do any line that way. So along with slope, some things they got into was, hey, maybe we're given two points. Can I find the slope using the slope formula? And that formula was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So an example that you should have seen was what if we had the point 1, negative 4, and 3, 2. And I want to find the slope between those two points, the slope of the line that goes through those two points. Well, our slope, by the way, I forgot to say, slope in math is m. Why it's m? I don't know. 
I can guess that it's not S because S looks like a five. So we don't want a bunch of five looking things on our paper. M looks like an M. It doesn't look like any other number. So maybe they just chose M for slope for that reason. So our slope is our rise over run or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If I'm given two points, I can find the slope. I just say, hey, I'm going to have this as point one and this is point two. So my slope, m, is going to be y2. Remember, these are x and y coordinates. y2 is 2 minus, don't lose that minus, y1, which is minus 4. Where do people make mistake on the slope formula? This minus minus. A lot of people would just put 2 minus 4, and they forget that it is minus. They forget about this minus already there. Minus minus 4. Okay. Now I'm going to subtract the x's. x2 is 3 minus x1, which is 1. 2 minus minus becomes plus plus. 2 plus 4 is 6. 3 minus 1 is 2. And we get a slope of 3. Okay. A slope of 3. If I were to plot these points, Uh, the point 1, negative 4, 1, negative 4, and the point 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, up 2. I can connect them with the line. And we can actually count this off. And this was uh, the, in one of the videos, you know, counting off is a good way to go. We said it's the change in Ys. Well, the change in Y, this vertical change, is... Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a plus six change. We go up six, and then we do the run over one, two. It's a plus two. Notice how we get rise over run, six over two. It ended up right here. That's a slope of three. And what we can do with this is we can use this slope now to count up three, one, two, three, over one. Notice it lands on the line. Up three, one, two, three, over one, lands on the line. Up three, one, two, three, over one. Notice it lands on the line. All of a sudden, if I know the slope, I can get the shape of the, the line, the slant of it. Then all I got to know is where do I set it down? The one last thing they had in 11.3 that you should have picked up on was parallel uh, and perpendicular lines. And, you know, these can get a little bit complex, but they were keeping it fairly simple for you. Parallel lines means the slope is the same. Parallel lines have the same slope. If they never intersect, then they must be parallel, right? If they never intersect, they must be parallel. If they never intersect, that means that they have the same slope. Perpendicular was a little bit tougher. They said that if you take your slope, the perpendicular slope is going to be negated and reciprocated. So they have an opposite, they would say opposite uh, reciprocal. All right, so that's a quick review. We're going to get into it. We're only going to get through 11.4 in this uh, time, but this is all the background. Gosh, it seems like so much. Hopefully today, slope intercept form kind of puts it all together and packages it nice and neatly so that you guys get a little bit more of a smiley face rather than all of these kind of long, you know, drawn out things. So let's get some notes. 11.4, slope intercept form. Here is what I want you to write down about slope intercept form of a linear equation. It says y, and by the way, when it says linear equation, remember it just says that's just a straight line, linear equation. It sounds like a crazy way to, to name something. Slope intercept form sounds scary, but again, this is supposed to make you happier. This is supposed to be easier, all right, if we get familiar with it. If we have an equation y equals mx plus b, notice this is 1y. This is like y is isolated y equals mx plus b, m is the slope, and b is that y-intercept. Um, this is called the slope-intercept form because it's slope-intercept. It's the slope-intercept form. They don't complicate it with some funny name. It's not named after the person who created it. It's not Jerry's linear equation. It's slope-intercept form because it's going to deal with the slope 
and the intercept. So the first thing we want to familiarize ourselves with is recognizing slope intercept and then recognizing the pieces of slope intercept. So example one says identify the slope and y intercept from a linear equation and a is y equals 3x minus 1. So if I'm going to go through this, I have to think first, is it in slope intercept form? Is it y equals mx plus b? Well, it looks like 1y equals mx plus b. So yes, it is in slope intercept form. So what is the slope here? Well, the slope looks to be like the number that's touching x. What number is touching x? 3. So the slope is 3. The intercept, the y-intercept is whatever is hanging out, whatever number is hanging out with the slope. It's minus 1, so b, the intercept, is minus 1. So we get a slope of 3 and an intercept of minus 1. Now before we go on to b and c, I want to share with you why do we care? Something so simple, why do we care? Well, let's graph y equals 3x minus 1 using this slope-intercept method. Well, I've already said that the slope is 3 and the intercept is 1. And I'm going to graph. And the whole idea is supposed to make graphing a lot easier. The idea is I don't want to do an xy table to graph. So I'm going to show you how slope-intercept form can make our lives easier. This intercept is our starting point, and it should be negative 1, sorry. Our intercept is negative 1 because it's minus 1. If I'm starting at minus 1, I just put a point at minus 1. It's where the cross is the y-axis. It crosses it at minus 1. That's one point. Remember, two points make a line. I've already, I'm already halfway there. I've already got a point. I didn't make an xy table. Remember. We don't want to make xy tables if we don't have to. Man, that takes forever. So now I've already got one point because the intercept is negative 1. How do I deal with the slope? What does this tell me? Well, I can count this off. Count it off to create new points. Meaning, if I make this a fraction over 1, you do want your slope to be fractions, by the way, which is a change. Usually we like whole numbers. We actually like our slopes to be fractions. And so if it's a whole number 3, I make it a fraction by putting it over 1. Remember back on the first slide, I said the slope was the rise over the run, the up, down, over the left, or the right. So that means I'm going to go up 3 and right 1. I'm just going to count it off. Up 3. 1, 2, 3. Over 1. There's another point. Up 3. 1, 2, 3. Over 1. I've already got three points now. Very quickly, I've got a line. Okay. The idea is if I can recognize a starting spot and I can recognize or I know and I know how to use the slope, this should make graphing very quick and easy. That's gotta be easier than this XY table, right? So the idea is you're gonna use the intercept as your starting point. And then you're going to use your slope to count it off. Oops. All right. So let's go back to question B. Y equals minus 2.7x plus 5. What's my slope here? Well, I have to think Y equals MX plus B. So my slope M is minus 2.7. And my intercept is 5. Once I have that, I can graph this. I start at 5. Let's graph this one. This is an ugly one. y equals minus 2.7x plus 5. I said my slope is negative 2.7 and my intercept is 5. So I'm going to start my graph. This tells me to start at plus 5. So I'm going to go up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I already got a point. How am I going to count this off? Well, I'm going to make it a fraction. And when it has a minus sign, when it's a negative slope, I know my slope had better go downwards, left to right. 
right? And it's a negative slope, so it's going to go downwards. I usually leave the negative with the top number, meaning I'm going to say down 2.7 and then write 1. So I'm going to count down 2.7. So 1, 2, and then almost 3. 2.7 is almost 3. And then over 1. And I'm going to count down 1, 2, and then a little bit more. Whoops, not put a point there. And then over 1. And all of a sudden, I've got my three points. I've got three points make a line. Two points make a line, but here's three. And we're there. This is supposed to be easier. This is supposed to be now I can graph something in a minute that might have taken me five or ten minutes before. It's supposed to be more efficient, and it's supposed to have less mistakes. Anytime we can do something faster with less mistakes, that's got to make that's got to be a good thing, right? C, y equals 4x. We have y equals, so it is in slope-intercept form. The slope is whatever's touching the x. The slope is 4. But then I think, what is b equal? I don't see anything. Well, there's this unwritten plus 0. My intercept is 0. Okay? Now, how do you know, how do you trust me that the equations that I just graphed are even correct? Maybe Mr. Reese is just making it up. Maybe he's full of it. Maybe he's just lying to us. Well, let's go online. I want to show you a nice calculator out there, uh, that, a nice graphing calculator. It's at desmos.com, D-S-M-O-S.com. I'd write that down. I take advantage of this website. It's a free uh, online graphing calculator. It's very easy to use. It'll go to this page, and you'll say graphing calculator. It's nice and big and colored, and it's just so much more easy to use, uh, and it's free. I mean, come on. So what I want to start with is I want to go ahead and show you my graph on the calculator looks just like the graph that I did on here. So y equals, I can just type it in. By the way, this always works as y equals. So I type in 3x minus 1. Now you can type the x on your keyboard. Or you can hit this keyboard button, and it gives you all kinds of functions that we might get into later, like squared or to the third or absolute value. All right, so I want 3x minus 1. And there it is, 3x minus 1. Does that look like the graph that I did on freehand? Yeah. Yeah, it does. All right, let's look at the other one that we did. We did y equals minus 2.7x plus 5. So let's look at that. I've got too many screens going, sorry. Minus 2.7x plus 5. Minus 2.7x plus 5. You can use the plus button down here if you'd like. Hit return. And there it is. Does that look like what we graphed? Yeah, it looks a lot like what we graphed. Okay, so the idea is, you know, use this Desmos to kind of get some good practice and get some good feedback. By the way, what I really like about Desmos is remember we said we could graph through the X and Y intercept. Look, it has points that I can drag here and tells me the coordinates. Look, there's the X intercept, 1.8520, and there's the Y intercept, 0, 05. So it gives me a lot of information, and moving forward, you know, if you ever wondered, why do we always graph? Well, the point of graphing is to take information from it, and that's where we're going to go, and Desmos is going to help us there. Um, what else I like about Desmos is I can go ahead and type in mx plus b, and I can reinforce what I've kind of told you already about how this uh, thing, how this equation works. So if I let b equal 0, and I asked you, I said, think of a line in your brain, and now tell me where it is without showing me. The first thing after a few minutes you come up with is, well, here's the slope of it. Here's how much it's tilted. It's tilted really high. Look at how it, in, you know, in real time, it tilts really high. As it gets close to zero, the slope of zero is flat. It's horizontal. That should make sense. What's the slope of the floor? Well, it's flat. There is no slope. The slope is zero. And then it goes negative, right? And the more negative we go, the steeper it is, okay? So after you've told me the steepness, you say, oh, yeah, that's the steepness right there. 
at 4.6. And I'd say, is that the line you were thinking of? Remember, I asked you to think of a line. You'd say, no. But that's, how, that's the slant of it. And then I'd say, well, where does it go? Is it up here? Is it down here? Is it over here? Or where is it? Well, that's how we need to have B. B tells us where it is. B moves it up and down. Okay, I know it looks visually, it looks like it's moving to the left, but it's actually, if you stare at this point where it intersects the y-axis, it's actually moving up and now it's moving down. I know it, move, it looks visually like it's moving left to right, but really the line is moving up and down. And then you say, oh, there it is at minus 7.9. That's the line I had in my, in my mind, okay? The idea is, I'll reinforce the idea, the idea is that we can graph any line by knowing the slope and the intercept. Every line is defined by a slope and an intercept. How steep is it? Where does it go? How steep is it? Where does it go? And everything we do after this is going to basically be based around finding a slope and finding out where to put it. It's, we're going to dress it up a lot different to be tricky to you, but every equation that you're going to deal with is basically I got to find the slope and I got to find out where to put it, right? That's, that's the overarching picture of graphing a linear equation. What's the slope? Where do I put it? So in, uh, you know, keeping with the idea of we're going to dress it up and make it more complex for you, what happens if we look at a problem that looked like 11.2 that was in standard form? How do we deal with that with slope-intercept? So if I'm given minus 5x minus 2y equals 6 and I'm asked to graph it, well, here's the problem. I don't want to do an xy table that I, lose, that I learned in 11.2. I don't want to do that. Is there some way I can deal with this standard form? Get the slope and the intercept because I like that a lot more. Well, I can do a little bit of algebra to get us into y equals mx plus b. We definitely don't have y equals mx plus b here, but we can get there. To get there, what we're going to do is basically out of like 10.6, I think we did some uh, solving for different letters in geometry where it was like solve for t, solve for l. We're going to do that here. We're going to solve for this little y right here. We're going to get y equals. So to do that, I need to get everything to the other side. So this minus 5x has got to go to the other side by adding 5x. And I get minus 2y equals 5x plus 6. Could you write it as 6 plus 5x? Sure, but well, you can't write 11x, don't do that. 5x and 6 are not like terms, so you can't put them together, you can just rewrite them. I don't have y by itself yet, I have minus 2y, so I gotta divide everything by minus 2, and that gets y by itself, and I get minus 5 halves x, and 6 divided by 2 is, I don't know why I put a plus there, because it's minus 3. Now, before what I just showed you on slope-intercept form, this y minus y equals minus 5 halves x minus 3, probably you, you didn't want to do that problem because the minus 5 halves turned you off. Because you knew you were going to have to do an xy table, and you didn't want to deal with fractions, and it's a turnoff. But with slope-intercept form, we actually like having a slope that's in fraction form. So all I gotta do is get it into y equals mx plus b. I recognize in this problem that my slope is minus 5 halves and my intercept is minus 3. So I can graph very quickly. I can go to minus 3. I'm gonna add another tick mark right here. Uh, minus 3 is right there and I put a point down. That's my starting spot, right? Start at your intercept. And then count off down, because it's minus, down 5, and then to the right 2. So I need more tick marks to go down 5. I better get some tick marks going this way, too. Down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 2. To make a line. There we go. And I think to myself, I wonder if I could check this. Oh, yeah. I've got this great free graphing calculator that I can go ahead and as long as I type it in in slope-intercept form, minus 5 halves x minus 3, I can't type it in this way. 
this graph calculator needs it to be in slope intercept form. I can type in minus five halves, so minus five. It didn't want the minus sign there. Let me start again. So uh, let's see, minus five halves. Now, if I just type x, it's going to put it in the denominator, and that's not good. So I delete that, and I'm going to move my cursor to the x to, to be times the entire minus five halves. And then I have minus three. Does that look like what I graphed? Yeah, it looks like I'm correct. So that's a very powerful thing to understand this. Not only did I graph it quickly, I graphed it correctly, and I didn't, you know, I really should be in a better mood about it rather than the mood I'd be in if I did an XY table. Okay? So now we're getting more and more powerful with this graphing. Once we pick up a few of the clues, all of a sudden things get easier and you're like, oh, this isn't so bad. This isn't going to just ruin my day every day, all day, right? Let's look at, oh, we already graphed this. This is the same equation as we just did. Y equals minus 5 have X minus 3. All right, we're almost done. Uh, it asks, y, graph the equation Y equals 4X by using the slope and Y intercept. So Y equals 4X by using the slope and y-intercept. First thing I do, I'm gonna give you three steps here. Basically what we do is one, do we have slope-intercept form? We need to inspect, do we have slope-intercept form? Yes, we do. On the previous example, no, we did not. So we had to address it and get it into slope-intercept form. Step two, we identify the slope and we identify the intercept. Here, my slope is four and my intercept is zero because I have that invisible zero right, that we don't write down. And then step three is go ahead and graph. Once you've got this information, go ahead and graph it. Where do I start? I start at zero. There's one point. I'm going to make my slope a fraction by putting it over 1. 4 is positive, so that means up. 1 is positive, so that means to the right. So up 4 and to the right 1. So I count off from this first starting point. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. And I get a few points down, and all of a sudden I've graphed it very quickly and easily. All right, just a few more slides here, a few more things to look at. Okay, now that we're familiar with slope and intercept and how to graph, let's take and combine stuff from 11.3 with parallel and per perpendicular lines, and let's see if we can get a little bit more dynamic. And while it's more dynamic, meaning it might be harder, we're familiar enough, we've got enough confidence that these should hopefully become some of the problems where you're like, man, I hope these are on the test. These are easy. So example five asks us to, given a pair of lines, determine if they are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Are they parallel, are they perpendicular, or are they neither? And I think back to 11.3, I remember parallel meaning they have the same exact slope. So if two lines have the same slope, they're parallel. Easy peasy. Perpendicular means they have opposite reciprocal slopes. So I, if they have that, then it's perpendicular. If it's not, then it's not perpendicular. If it's neither parallel nor perpendicular, then it is neither. Okay? So putting all that information together, what do I know about parallel? What do I know about perpendicular? The only thing I care about is the slopes. I only care about the slope in these equations. I don't care about minus 5, plus 1, y, y. All I care about is the slopes. All right, now I crossed a bunch of stuff out before we even looked at it, but I'm trying to get you to focus in. Look, if we only care about the slope, who cares about the rest? 
if knowing the slope is going to get us to our answer, and that's all I need, then let's focus on it. Don't let the whole thing, don't let all of this L1 is y equals 3x minus 5 and L2 is y equals 3x plus 1. Don't let that look like a foreign language to you. Say, I have a line that has a slope of 3 because it's in y equals mx plus b form. I have another line that's in y equals mx plus b form and it has a slope of 3. Slope of 3, slope of 3, these two lines are parallel. Just through inspection, this has a slope of 3, this has a slope of 3. They're the same, that means they're parallel. They met the definition for parallel. So now I look at problem B. Line 1 is 3 halves x plus 2. Line 2 is 2 thirds x plus 1. All I care about is the slope. They're in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b. The slope of the first line is 3 halves. The slope of the second line is 2 thirds. They are reciprocals, but they're not opposites of each other. And what I mean by opposite is if this were negative 2 thirds, the opposite positive is negative. If it were negative 2 thirds, I would say yes, perpendicular. But they're both positive, so they are not opposite. That means they're not perpendicular. The slopes are not the same. 3 halves is not the same as 2 thirds, so they're not parallel. They're not perpendicular. These are neither. Okay? When you run into parallel and perpendicular, just think slope. They want slope. We're dealing with slope. Got to have slope. What's the slope? What's the slope? What's the slope? All right, last slide here. Write an equation of the line whose slope is 2 thirds and whose y intercept is 0, 8. I guess I got one more slide. I lied to you. We got a slide after this. Two more problems will be done in 10 minutes. Write an equation of the line whose slope is 2 thirds and whose y intercept is 0, 8. So we're going to write an equation. Now, this is the part where this example and the next one start to get, you know, we really start to lose people. People get less confident about moving forward. And what I mean is we are very good at taking slope intercept and finding slope intercept, slope intercept, slope intercept, slope intercept. We get very good at that, very confident, very happy. But then all of a sudden when we're given a slope and an intercept, maybe we don't quite put it all together like we should and it just doesn't go as well. But the basic idea is if you're asked to write an equation, the only equation you want to deal with right now is y equals mx plus b. And you know m and b are the things you want to know. Well, we know m is two-thirds. So I've already got two-thirds. y equals two-thirds x. I just plug it in. The intercept, hey, the intercept is 8. Remember our y-intercept is 0b. Back in 11.2, I said, when we do these intercepts, it's 0B. We'll be coming back to that B idea. Here it is. Here's B. So it's plus 8. And you look at that and you go, oh, well, duh, that doesn't seem so bad. I can do that. And you can. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. We can write equations given a slope and an intercept. But the next slide is really going to highlight, is really going to be the part that throws people off. And it's what happens if we get a little bit more complex and they give us the slope and a point that is not the intercept. So this is the one uh, of all the problems here that I see big picture students getting stuck in the mud with. This is starting to be kind of the deep mud that students struggle to get out of the rest of the chapter, okay? Um, so really put, so let's put some time into this. Let's really understand what's going on here. So hopefully you don't get stuck in the mud and then the rest of the chapter is, is difficult. All right. So again, we're writing an equation of a line with a slope of two and goes through the point minus three, one. Well, again, I, I like writing my equations y equals mx plus b because it's a slope and a point. So already, Knowing the slope is 2, I have y equals 2x. 
The problem is, is that point minus three, one is not the intercept. That's not E. So what do I do? And this is where students, you know, I know you've seen it before, but maybe you didn't understand it. Let's go ahead and graph what we have so far, y equals 2x. Let's use decimals here. And I'm going to put plus b. y equals 2x plus b. Because this is the slope of my line. I just need to figure out where to put it so that it goes through the point minus 3, 1. Well, the point minus 3, 1, let me zoom in a little bit. Oops. That's not how I want to do it. Anyway, the point minus 3, 1 is right here. 1, 2, 3, minus 3, 1 is right here. I want this slant to go, this slanted line to go through this point. Well, right now it doesn't. But as I move the line towards it, as B increases, it's getting closer to this point. Notice at B equals 7 it goes through that point minus 3, 1. There it is. This is the equation y equals 2x plus 7. That's the correct answer. How do we get there, though, without using Desmos? How do we get there using, basically using algebra, using what we know? Well, what I'm going to do is keep b as b. I'm going to start my equation, y equals 2x plus b. I put 2 in because I know the slope is 2. And from there, I'm going to do something that's kind of like a, I, I don't know, uh, a break, a math kind of breakthrough. I know that minus 3, 1 is a very specific x, y coordinate. I know that I have x and y in my equation. Why don't I just substitute in to solve for b? I'm going to solve for b. I'm going to use my point to solve for b. I'm going to put in minus 3, so I would have 2 times minus 3. I'm going to put in 1 for y, 1 for y. So I get 1 equals 2 times minus 3 plus b. I'm going to solve for b. 1 equals 2 times minus 3 is minus 6 plus b. To get b by itself, I add 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. And notice, that's exactly what we expected, b to be 7 from Desmos. Okay, so I know I've got the correct answer, but 7 equals B, not the finish to my problem. The finish to my problem, the solution, is the entire equation. So I know M is 2 and 7 is B, so Y equals 2X plus 7. That is an equation with the slope of 2 that goes through the point minus 3, 1. All right, this problem right here starts to be the deep mud that I think that students get stuck in. And if you don't 